do it? Yeah, okay. Uh, so um, here we are in this info session to explain the main requirements to participate in the first open call that is closing 15 of July. So um, in, in 10 days from now. And what requirements do you need to fill and the different steps in the application process to participate in the first accelerator program, IoT based, okay? So this is the agenda. I'm gonna explain a bit the accelerator program, how it will work. Then I will present the first open call and the main steps to apply for it. And then my colleague Abdul will uh, explain and showcase different use cases, just as an example for you to see what kind of uh, applications and IoT developments you will be able to, um, to implement during the accelerator program with our support. Uh, anytime you have a question, a doubt about anything, please just write it on the chat and we can go through them at the end of the session. And also you are free to open your mic and your camera uh, to be on a more familiar um, uh, session. So what is the accelerator program that we are organizing in the Habitus project? We have identified five innovation challenges. So five economic sectors that we really want to have an impact on them. Uh, now we will see uh, what are these five uh, sectors. In the accelerator program, we want to open two different calls. So this year, 2022, it's open currently the first open call, but also the next year we will uh, run a second open call to run a second accelerator program. So in total, in the Habitus project, in the frame of it, we will uh, run two different accelerator programs. And in total, the idea is to run two business and technical support programs, okay, these accelerator programs, to support a total of 50 innovators. So 50 entrepreneurs, 50 uh, startups, SMEs, who have a IoT uh, solution that want to, um, to, to put in the market, okay? So we want to support a total of 50 new digital applications uh, coming from Africa. For this, we already have created a pool of mentors. So we have a pool of experts in different sectors and domains. So uh, as part of the accelerator program, the participants will be able to, to have this support from experts and, and, and mentors. And then also in the second open call, especially we want to support and boost European and Africa partnerships. So we will encourage applicants to submit joint applications between Africa startups and European startups. So we will develop a specific program to support applicants to fund European partners to uh, submit, a, submit a proposal, but this is for the next open call. And we also encourage in this accelerator program, the participation of women-led businesses, okay? So we want, um, female applicants uh, to, to be part of the, of the program and to have a, a representation here. What is the acceleration, acceleration methodology? So the five digital challenges that we have defined are covering the industry 4.0 sector, the agri-food, smart cities, e-health and green economy. And under these five digital challenges, potential applicants uh, will be able to submit a project idea. So now we have the open call for proposals uh, running. Uh, everyone who is interested or have a IoT solution in one of these five different sectors can apply. Uh, the reception of, uh, of project ideas is now taking place and it will close on the 15th of July. So in 10 days, we will start with the evaluation process and the selection of the most innovative, most promising IoT solutions in these five sectors, okay? When we have completed the selection uh, of the 20 startups, I don't know if I mentioned this, but in this first open call, we are gonna select 20 startups, 20 entrepreneurs, 20 uh, small, medium enterprises, we are gonna welcome them to our six month business and technical support program that is run by the Habitus project. 
So we will be in charge of developing and implementing it, but also we will count on the support of associated African digital innovation hubs, okay? Uh, what will you find in this six month technical and business support program? Well, uh, the idea here is that the first program will start on September. We will use um, July and August to do this evaluation and selection of startups. And then on September, we will kick off this uh, first accelerator program. And the idea during the six months is to provide you, the, the selected applicants, with the different tools that we have developed in the Habit Mythos project that are the solution lab, application business boxes, different training courses, access to this pool of mentors, also participated in networking activities and get uh, the participants ready for an investment readiness um, phase. We are gonna also support with business support uh, tools like business model canvas, proof of concept, minimum viable product, so uh, during this six months, we will be with the applicants, uh, working with them, um, depending on the different needs and challenges that the, the applicants have to support them with their um, new applications and develop, IoT developments and uh, business uh, needs as well, okay? And to participate in this Habiquitus uh, Accelerator program, the first open call, as you know, is now open. It will close 15th of July. Uh, and you have all the information in, the, uh, in our website. Now I'm gonna move to explain this first open call, the main requirements and the main uh, conditions to participate in it. And also show you how, in, how is the application process going, okay? So this is, I think, the main important aspect that you have to consider. Who can participate in this open call? The eligible applicants are entrepreneurs, startups, scale-ups, or SMEs, okay? You have to uh, fulfill this condition. And also the eligible uh, applicants uh, only can come from these four African countries. So Egypt, Ghana, Nigeria, and Tanzania. Just a side note, for the second open call next year, the idea is to widen this uh, country's participation so other African countries will be able to participate in the second open call. But in this first open call, you have to take this into consideration that uh, applicants coming from uh, Kenya, for instance, are not eligible in this open call, just uh, to show an example. Also, we especially encourage applications from women and from young people. And uh, in case you have any uh, European partner already working with, that would be very good because the evaluation process will consider this as a very valuable point. So this is also something that we want to, to boost in the, in the accelerator program to enhance these connections with between the two innovation ecosystems, European and African. And also a very important thing to consider is that the IoT solutions that you propose in your application, you have to take in mind that they, they will be physically deployed in Africa. Okay, so different activities uh, covering prototyping and testing, the idea is to work with a a local innovation hub to support you in this um, phase of the implementation of the solutions, okay? And that's why during the online form to apply to the open call, you will have to select one of the innovation hubs that we are working with. We will, I will, I will show you this in a, in a bit. Okay, so, it's also very important when you decide to apply for the open call to consider the different uh, tools and services that you will get during the accelerator program. So this is very important. Everything is very detailed in the, in the guide for applicants. So that's why that's, it's very, very important that you read and go through this document in detail. 
And well, the application business box is one of the solutions that we are developing in the project. And this will be a ready to use technical and business support package to the applicants that will, that, that will consist sorry, in three main elements, prototyping kits and software templates, training courses, and also business support templates. Then we will have, uh, we will uh, offer a solution lab facilities. This solution lab is also um, a, a tool that we have developed in the Javi Equitus project that provides startups with the capacity to develop, test, experiment, and pilot innovative products using IoT. Okay. Later on, Abdul will show you some examples on how we use this solution lab to support your uh, development. We will also put uh, at your disposal a help desk and a main and permanent service of mentoring, so access to a pool of experts. We will also give you access to our learning area, and different training material, uh, different courses, different webinars, and also we will organize several boot camps and hackathons, okay? Then a different program that we are um, developing in the project is the MeetHub platform. Here we are creating a platform for IoT stakeholders to, uh, to boost collaboration between Europe and Africa ecosystems, and also to encourage networking and learning between professionals and startups, SMEs, uh, people working in the innovation ecosystems. And also, and as part of the, let's say, the last stage of the accelerator program, uh, we also foresee to host two interactive online workshops on investor readiness. So here we want to support the applicants to planning for access to finance, uh, to how to pitch before an investor, and uh, these kind of things. All right. So these are the main, the main inputs that you will get uh, as participants of the accelerator program. But last but not least, this is also very attractive. We are expecting to give awards, uh, monetary awards. So we will select as part of the accelerator program one overall winner of the, pro of the, of the program. And we will distribute 1,000 euros uh, to this overall winner. But also then we will select a winner in each of the four African countries that can participate. So apart from this overall winner, we will select a winner for Nigeria, for Egypt, for Tanzania, and for Ghana. Okay. And in this first open call, we are going to select 20 projects. So there are going to be 20 participants in the first accelerator program. All right, so then um, how to apply to the open call? Uh, you have to bear in mind there are two parts uh, of, the, of the process. The first part is the proposal template. So this is the technical description of your project idea. And then we have part two, that is the administrative data sheet. And this is an online form that must be submitted online. And you can submit proposals until Friday, 15 of July, 5 p.m. Central European time. In the website, I'm gonna show you now the website because in, in the website, you can download directly the guide for applicants. You can access directly the online form and you can also download directly a template to complete the technical description of your project, okay? Here, so this is the Javi Quitos website. This is the area where, the section where the, the first open call is explained. And here you can directly download the guide for applicants. That is this document that you are seeing on the screen right now. These are the contents in the guide for applicants. So everything you need to know is in this document. Here, you can download directly the technical description of your uh, proposal. 
in the first page you have a uh, kind of guidelines and it's important to read everything the maximum um of pages that uh, your proposal must cover is six pages okay this is the limitation that we put and um then the idea here is that you must reply to several uh, questions regarding business and industrial relevance of your idea. What is, the, what is the innovative use of the technology that you are proposing? What is the societal and economic value of the project that you are uh, presenting? What is your exploitation strategy, if you have any? What, how do you expect to implement the project? So if you have a team of uh, different staff in working in the startups or the SME, it's important to mention them, to uh, showcase the relevance and the experience that they have, and also uh, to explain what is the main work plan of, the, of your uh, proposal, okay? So the present a detailed project plan, with the objectives, with the, um, how is the IoT deployment, the main milestones that you want to achieve. So it's important so that these main aspects are included in the in your proposal because this will be the uh, evaluation criteria. Then the evaluation will be run by independent experts as well. And they will have an evaluation read and they will see how you are responding to all these questions. So it's important that you follow uh, as much as possible these templates, okay? And then if you click on apply here, you will access directly to the online form, okay? That is the last thing that you will have to prepare because in this online form, you will have to attach the technical description. So it's uh, it's convenient that once you are filling this online form, you already have your technical description uh, complete. Okay, that's that is important. Here you have a summary of the main requirements uh, for for you to don't forget. Uh, here you write your email address and then you start submitting the uh, the online form. Uh, we have first an administrative data sheet. So general information. This is, for instance, the proposal ID. This, this is the date, okay? The date of applications today is, oh, sorry. Today is um, 5th of July, 2022. My acronym of the project, this is an example that I'm using to, to, to show you. It's Waterfly. The acronym is Waterfly. The title of the project is, for instance, Innovative Solutions to Improve Water Manage. I want to address the challenge of smart cities because my solution is to offer a new solu IoT solutions to improve the water management of uh, my city, for instance. Then I write like several keywords, water management and, for instance, city. Then I must write an abstract, so a short description of my proposal, okay? So in just a, par a paragraph, we see what your project is about. Then we have to select uh, if I am, play I, I am applying as an entrepreneur, an startup or SME. What is my, the legal name of my, of my startup? The year of, of foundation? the personal ID, the address of my organization, the town, let's see. I'm just writing in order to complete the, an online form online with you. This is, if you see this mark here is because you are obliged to respond to the, the question itself. And then we ask the person in charge of the proposal. Okay. The full address. The email address again. 
and the telephone. We continue and we ask you to explain the motivation to participate in the Habituitus IoT Accelerator program. Here it will be good to say why do you want to take part on, on the program? Whatever is your, uh, your motivation. Here, this is an important question in case you have a European partner, okay? If it's the case, you must reply yes. And then complete here the, the administrative data of your partner in Europe. And if it's a no, it's okay. You just, you just don't reply to the rest of the questions and move to the next uh, section. And here is a, also a very important question. Here you have to choose the African Innovation Hub that is closest to you, because this uh, local hub will be in charge of supporting you more in the field, okay? So if I'm from Egypt, for instance, in Egypt, we are collaborating with Fabla. So it's the one in, in Egypt, so we have this option and we will need to, to mark it. And then, here is the part where we have to attach the technical description, okay? So this proposal must be filled in advance. So when it comes the time that we have to attach it, the document is ready, okay? So here we will uh, attach the technical description and include it. And here we will have to attach and the different curriculum vitae of the uh, of the person in charge of the proposal, but also if it's the case, the team that is behind the project, okay? And then that's all. The last page is just to confirm everything and to uh, be aware of the personal data that you are sharing with us um, and that, is, that everything is, is all right. Okay, so the application process, just a recap. We must read carefully the guide for applicants that we can download directly from the website. Second step, we must prepare the technical proposal. So follow the template, reply to it, and bear in mind that the maximum of pages is six. And third step is to complete the online form with the different administrative information and uploading our documents as well. Um, inside the Habiquitus project, I'm responsible for running this open call. So any doubt, any questions you may have during the process, just please send an email to me. You have, I think, my, my email already. And uh, that's it. I don't know. I don't think there are questions in the chat so far, but if you have any questions, you can, um, you can ask them after Abdul has share some examples, okay? So now the idea is to share some IoT developments that uh, were supported in the past. So you have an idea of what kind of projects we are expecting to support in this accelerator program. Hi, Abdur. Oh, okay, very good. So you can, uh, I will just, uh, I sense the, okay. You can see that my desktop, right? Yes. Okay, very good. So yes, so as as uh, Carmen uh, presented, so the idea of my presentation is to give you uh, some some kind of little bit uh, understanding, uh, actually, the what is the IoT and and uh, mainly how IoT can be used in the different context. Uh, I think you have. Uh, you have been seen to maybe the other presentation and also many of our other tutorials, you know, what is IoT, but for me, it's more important to show several examples to get a bit uh, a feelings actually how you could use it. And these are the um, examples, you can uh, find it uh, in the online, uh, online in the, in the website uh, and Carmen, um, I, can, I think she put it on the link. So um, yes, yeah, so this was coming from the previously uh, our our uh, example startup that we have been working with them. So this is giving you a quite opportunity. So for example, this is like the one is called Aspana uh, project. 
So this this is a project uh, that it's pro it, it's about uh, the mobile charging. Um, you know, in Africa has a lot of uh, I mean, not only Africa, many other countries also. The remote has a problem with the charging. After some time, your mobile gone, and because now just we are using a lot of mobile phone all the time. So and and you don't find the charging uh, station, or you don't you, you need to carry up the, out the power bank and things like that. So this I, I start up idea is to develop a, a charging uh, station, uh, which is distributed across many different cities and 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 the shopping mall and things like that. And and then um, you just pay uh, as you go. So you pay a, a, a amount of charge you wanted to have, and then. And then after that, you connect it, it will charge it. So this is uh, in here, the, the IoT is actually the, the where all those are designing. So you need to use also so quite many mass electronics and, and, and things like that. But on terms of IoT is more like the payment system, how you, the, the mobile banking, uh, like the payment system and, and things was connected with that. And also, they wanted to remotely uh, see the the device is functioning while devices are working. Well. This is one application. So that means that in these cases, the IoT also using uh, quite a lot on the on the more more remote connection of the devices, and then also the, the for uh, for using also mobile bank. Then another startup is also smart parking. So like you know that to find a parking slot, free parking slot is a quite common. Uh, IoT application, you might know that uh, uh, that it's more likely to find a parking, uh, free parking space. So this is also kind of where IoT use often this this IoT devices are are put on the on the parking lot, and this is uh, can can monitor the occupancy, like if the slot is free or it is already occupied at this. So and these devices actually collect, uh, collecting the information from the from the physical. So this is one. This is another also the the cattle. Uh, so I I cattle. So this is actually another startup. What they have developed, they developed uh, some kind of uh, devices. You can see the sensor right there, which can monitor the health of the cattle. Uh, often you know that the cattle also need to be the cow. Uh, need to be also also monitor the, the health condition, uh, like um, especially the kind of heat monitoring and things like that that you need to do for the cow, and also the location monitoring. So you you have a quite lot of IoT application there, especially animal uh, health and 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 tracking and and monitoring the location. So in terms of when coming IoT, most of the are. Application are remote monitoring uh, of the object itself, and in addition, also sometimes you use also um, monitoring the the process of the device itself, the how the device is performing itself. This is also another. So there are uh, there are different cases you can also use IoT. Uh, this is also another uh, startup. They have been occupation simulator. So it's more like a kind of the, they develop a IoT devices. Uh, more, more for the home security. So, where uh, if uh, if uh, if something uh, detected and some thief or, or someone enter the house and it detect with the sensor and and it makes some kind of a, a buzzer and, and things like that. So it make alarm alarm. So that is also another another kind of IoT and and uh, these devices also can send a notification to to the person immediately that there is some thief in, in the house. So that means that, that IoT is more like the, the connectivity. So you connect the devices uh, with, the, with the remotely with the, some kind of information for, for uh, monitoring the presence of the, of the devices or, or monitoring the, the status of the devices, like the healthy status of the devices or process. So there are many different, different things you can do. Um, this is more autonomic irrigation. This is very common IoT, typical IoT application where you, you monitor the, the water content, we monitor the soil, you monitor the pH. So, and, and based on the, the exact information that you have coming from the farm, then you give, uh, you, you can run the motor, auto, you can, you can uh, autonomically uh, configure the, the, your motor so that if there is a, a less water in the, in the field, the, the motor should be running. 
So here is also again uh, IoT application using for the monitoring, monitoring the, the field, monitoring the, the level of the water condition, and then after the turning of the water. There is also another IoT devices, uh, mostly like the uh, camera. With the camera, they are also you can also put the camera, and then after that you can with the camera uh, some some kind of running the the image processing. Um, some kind of machine learning, you can also count the, the number of the traffic passing by. So it's more like the counting the tra uh, traffic system and things. So this is also another, another IoT application. Uh, this is another application you can see that it's called Tech Now. They have developed a, a um, autonomic, uh, more like a kind of this uh, uh, hand washer, yeah, like that for the COVID, during the COVID. So uh, you need to wash the hand. So they developed the IoT uh, system. Uh, this, this, you can see that this system is also using to configure the, the devices. For example, uh, it has a sensor. Uh, when you, you, you bring the, your hand closer to the sensor, then it, it turn on the, the motor and, and, and the valve is on. So the, the liquid is, is, is fast, fast. And then, uh, so that means uh, this is more like automation part. But after that, they are also collecting this information to see how many people are washing on the hand and how many people are uh, yeah, uh, passing by. So they're also collecting the information so remotely in order, to, in order to process the data. This is also, you see that this is another application. It's, it's, a, it's called a Lotus uh, detection. You know, the, the Lotus is, is also a very uh, important problem in, in Africa, especially East Africa. Uh, where they, they come and they destroy the crops. And sometimes you can also monitor the, the, their uh, presence uh, with, with some kind of a sensor, uh, especially the, the weather condition. If the weather is very, uh, uh, weather is, is very dry and things, so sometimes this, this kind of disease comes. So this is also another in interesting thing that um, the IoT may not be used at direct uh, always as a, as a directly the what I said that mm, the kind of uh, indirect monitoring I, I would say that that or that because in these cases you are not really directly monitoring the low trust but you are monitoring the weather but somehow weather uh, has uh, to to do with the low trust if the weather is, is very hot and things uh, not raining and things so there is some kind of uh, pattern that how how it's related to that so mostly all the issue related to the climate uh, things uh, you you can monitor the climate, but then after that uh, you can uh, relate to that in climate information. And um, uh, then then also this all the also the energy management part. This is also like the you know the typical IoT application where you you can manage the energy consumption, uh, how much uh, energy is is, is uh, you're using, and then it's, it's a quite uh, very well well developed IoT application. And also the, this, this smart water meter here is also another application where it is using the um, monitoring the amount of water is more like the meter. Uh, and smart meter is very known for IoT application where you, you, you usually uh, measure the, the flow of the, of the, of the, of the uh, water, the liquid, oil. You can also use for oil. You can also use for energy. You can use for the gas. Uh, you can, yeah, many, many different places you can also use as a meter. Uh, yeah, and so this is meter, is, smart meter is also one typical IoT application, uh, where many cases are used. And uh, yeah, this is also power management one. And this is another application, you see that the, they are, it's called egg incubator, egg incubator. So here, uh, the, it's like the hatchery, hatcher, I think if I'm, if I'm right, Wadi. Uh, and uh, where you, you have the eggs and you want to monitor the temperature of the eggs in order to, for the, for the egg incubator to, to see, um, yeah, to, to make sure that the temperature are always in the constant. And because if, you know, if the temperature is very, these this eggs would be, would, be, would be damaged. So this is also the monitoring the here temperature of, of the egg, egg incubator. And uh, this is also uh, the other um, for the for the for the payment system to automatic payment system also use that one. This uh, break here, uh, I think they, this is also used for the uh, especially for the pregnant women 
uh, to monitoring the, the especially uh, kind of uh, uh, temperature level and, and, and especially mostly temperature, body temperature to monitor the, the temperature level for the pregnant woman because in order to, you know, to, if there is some fever or something and this need to be, need to be also monitored. So this is also the of develop uh, devices. So yeah, so there are many, many applications. You can look it here. So you can use IoT many, many different cases. So but most of them are really using uh, to either the connecting a devices uh, the remotely uh, to control the devices, uh, getting the information from devices, uh, or, or you can also uh, take the devices on to use the information that you collect from devices from the other context also. It doesn't need to be used in the, exactly the application that you have. You might, uh, you might also use the information that you collect completely other different context. So um, from the, for, in order, for in order to develop this IoT, there are many, many different uh, systems exist. Uh, uh, you need to know communication technologies. You need to know also the electronics. So I think um, the, the solution lab that we have provided, it has a different uh, so I think we mainly provided the um, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and LoRa are kind of devices. So you can use uh, different different communication uh, tools that, that you want to have. So yeah, so the, um, somehow, uh, you know, that uh, it is uh, sometimes we have been seen that it's not always easy to provide all the possibilities that you can do. But at least you can uh, develop an initial idea, uh, proof of concept idea that the hardware that we have provided with the solution lab. And later this make you to feel that actually this, this give you a better understanding. And then after that, you can, you can go ahead to develop a real IT, a real product that you want to do. And so that is all. I think there are many other examples there, but I, I think we don't need to Abdul, go over. Abdul, maybe we should give the floor to our participants because yes, exactly. they might have some questions. Sure, sure, yeah. Yes, actually, someone raised a hand. I think no longer, but... Um, okay, thank you, Abdur, for explaining and showing some different use cases. Um, we, we have more participants now, so now is your turn. If you, have, if you do want to ask any question that you have, if you applied or are applying to the open call and you have a specific concerns on how to do it, now it's, uh, it's the moment to ask. The, the ones connected here, are are you applying to the call? You can just do this if it's a yes. <laughs> okay, so I think there are no questions from, from, the, from the audience. So, well, Emmanuel, raise, do you want to ask something? Yes. Hi, hello. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Emmanuel. Go, go ahead. Okay, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for this opportunity. At least I've, I've come to understand a lot of stuff now about the uh, ubiquitous. I want to ask about the program. You said it's going to last for six months. And uh, the whole of six months, would we be at the hub center or some months and the other ones has to be from virtual or is it also possible to have the program virtual? Yes, uh, I think the, the option to, to have the program virtually, it's uh, fine for us, but we really want you to have this connection with the local hub to it depends also on the maturity uh, level of the, your IoT development. If you need a more technical support, uh, it will be good to go to the local hub, to work with them, uh, to use the solution lab, like the different uh, software hardware solutions that we can provide you. 
uh, and teach you on how to use it. But if the maturity IoT level is, 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 I don't know, higher, maybe you don't need that physical support and the program can be hosted virtually. Like all the communications, all the steps will be um, online, virtually, all the support as well. But uh, as part of the, as yeah, and also we will have like local events that we want to organize, innovation weeks and stuff. So we will have as well the opportunity to meet in person at some point. And here, I think we are quite flexible uh, depending on the situation of the applicant. Are you asking this because maybe you are far from one of the local hubs? Yeah, the, the other one, the first hub you meant mentioned ABBA. I don't know if it's the same ABBA in Abia State. <laughs> You know, there are two hubs in Nigeria, one in Lagos, and I read the other one is uh, Aba. I don't know where that is. So, but never mind. I think if it's Aba, the one in Abia said fine, it could be closer because I'm based in Port Um okay. But my question is mainly because of the products or industry that my startup is in, and also my partner who is in um, Europe. Um, he also mentioned that I should make sure I ask this and get clarification. Um, at the moment, for those who have already gotten their uh, um, landed pages, uh, more of our products and things just need some app, which is on our website at the moment, we are building such so scaling on the minimum viable product. <clears throat> so I thought of, do we still in that, haven't gotten to that level, do we still need to form a new platform on an IoT, any of the apps or any of it. So those are things I knew we were going to learn on the job. But he was also asking, would the, would the hub be needing us now to create a newer version of things or would they be able also to run on some existing platforms that already been made or milestones that have already been achieved, so to say. So those are why I said, no, let me also ask if it's going to be compulsory to be at the hub and all that. Okay. W one of your questions was was about the sector. So you don't think uh, the sector is covering your startup is not in these five uh, challenges that we are proposing? It's a different mm -hmm. one? Uh, yeah, it's a different one. Well, our startup is mainly on the marine maritime industry, um, creating a hub where go to the charters of uh, the vessel owners get seamless access to charters and charters get seamless access to vessels they want to charter uh, while we expand to other things so is we'll call it marine tech so if you okay. say smart yeah, would this one will be smart smart offshore yeah it could be maybe green economy as well because green economy covers quite Absolutely. different Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I think green econ economy will fit in, in the project you're proposing. Uh, That's all right. Yeah, maybe if, if you have more specific specific questions about the proposal itself, you can share it with me. Or we, we have here Daniel Sinagosi, uh, that is in ABBA in, in Nigeria. So they have you, you will select uh, that can also okay. work. Okay, no problem. Maybe I will do you a mail and send yes. you some of the things okay. we're working on from the mail. We can know which sector or where, which of the IOTs we're going to be having on them. Okay, okay, that's that's fine. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Emmanuel, where are you based in Nigeria? Portaco. Uh, Portaco. Okay, that's close. That's close. Okay. Okay, let's, let's, um, let's keep in touch. You completed your application, right? Yes, but I'm supposed to work on my technical. Yes. Okay, oh, fine. Then it's closer. I, when I saw ABBA, I saw double, double B. I was wondering where that is in Nigeria. So, <laughs> it's all right. No, that was an error. It's, it's AB. Okay, yeah. it's all right. It's all right. Thank you, Sachiga. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. So, more questions?
If not, well, we will send the presentation of today through email to the participants as well as the, the recording because we are uh, recording this session. And yes, don't, don't forget that we close the call uh, on 15 of July. So we have 10 more days and don't hesitate to contact us in case you have any doubt during the process. And thank you very much for joining. Thank you as thank well you. to my, you, my colleagues. Of the thank, you, thank you very much. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Have a nice Bye. evening. Bye. Bye. Bye.